Hello, side hustle with personality community. Today, I am thrilled to have someone with quite a track record in building a side hustle business, someone who knows how to leverage their personality. Joining me is Jerry DeLuca, executive producer of the show Motorcycle Wars, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, which is an elimination motorcycle racing web series. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good, 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 good. First of all, uh, yeah. once again, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm excited to have you uh, on the, the podcast and the show uh, because I love motorcycles, first of all. That's thrilling. Um, and uh, so, but I'm, I'm really excited to find out a little more. You're executive producer of Motorcycle Wars. So I want to know a little bit about that and the strategy of that. Sure. So tell us, tell us a little bit, uh, the community, a little bit about yourself. All right. Thanks, Kerry. I'm super excited to be here. Your energy is awesome. Uh, yeah, so I'm Jerry. And uh, ever since I was just a young lad, I can go back as far as maybe 10 years old, I've always had my hands on some kind of a motorcycle. I was fortunate enough that uh, my parents didn't, but an old, uh, an old friend of the family donated a small motorcycle to me, and I was just in love with it. And uh, so much so that uh, I had to take it all apart and put it back together and make the thing look brand new. And that started uh, an addiction. I've been doing that maybe one bike every three or four years. There's been uh, times where I, I take apart bikes and reassemble them just out of the love of doing them. Sometimes I wouldn't even ride them. It's just my hands are uh, very active and always need a project uh, to do. So in my teen years, I uh, started getting involved with uh, uh, motorcycles that were more uh, more for the racetrack. Um, never did I race a motorcycle. I just don't have the courage to do that. But I still have so much passion. It's crazy passion for these things. So now when it comes to this executive producer title, um, I, I, I'm a lot more than that. I really don't know what an executive producer does. I know that to get this side hustle off the ground, I had to do pretty well everything. Um, I, I also am a bit of a Photoshop hacker. So I've got this artistic talent in me uh, to, to work with software. I, you give me a can of paint and I'll paint something really beautifully. Uh, so I've got this technical thing about me and this artistic skill set um, that I just, I, I just have a sense that I need to do. Um, I've, I've heard it before. It's almost an omen if you, if you got a sense of creativity because it doesn't matter if there's money involved. You just got to do it. It's, it's got to come out of you. So I know that with certain projects, um, I, I can't keep doing them because a project costs money and you need to, you need to generate some income to, to do more projects. So I, I went around the idea by uh, building, refinishing bikes and selling them for a small profit throughout most of my, my teen years and actually through my 20s and 30s too. Uh, but um, I, 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 I built this one magical motorcycle and I, I met a, a lot of really cool people and they were television people. And that got me to thinking, that got me to thinking uh, about storytelling. Just because these people in television business are about storytelling. And uh, I've, uh, I've learned the value of that. Now, there's a whole bunch of stuff in between, Carrie. Uh, we can talk for a few days if you wish. <laughs> but uh, I would love that. I would love that. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll arrange something. <laughs> so I, um, I came up with this concept that involved uh, my skill set for artistic work as well as motorcycles. And uh, I developed this uh, concept for a television show that involved racing motorcycles. And in order to do it, uh, you had to develop pilots and you know, the teasers and 
a lot of filming, a lot of testing. Um, and I got a lot of help from a lot of people. So most of my projects involve just a few people or maybe sometimes just myself. But as I grew, the projects became a little bit grander. The side hustle needed more people to, su to support it. So- No, wait, what made, you, what made you think that you could do this? Mm -hmm. This is, uh, it, it came to you. And then what was your first step? You, you, were, you had a, a full-time job, correct? Yeah. Yes, correct. correct. What made you think that you of all people- Right could do something like this, produce a television show. Yeah. Where did that? Okay, so, go yeah. ahead. No, th th that's an awesome question because it, it, it's a gargantuan sized idea uh, to produce something like this, but it's weird. There's a passion in you that gives you this odd confidence. I don't know how it's bred into me. My dad must have done it. He, one thing I learned from my dad, he, he gave me a, a great tenacity for working hard uh, and working smart. Um, so I drafted up, my imagination started running and if it involved editing, I wanted to learn how to do that. I, I know how to do that now. And it involved a, a concept for racing motorcycles that would fulfill filming it. So it's a smaller production. It's not like a regular ra racing series. So it's a smaller racetrack, but the, the life death, the, the high risk, the high stakes are still there because these guys are doing 200 kilometers an hour. Yeah, this, you have professionals with amateurs. Yes. So the, the, the concept is the amateurs race against themselves to find the top champion amateur. The pros do the same. And then at the end, is the great gamble the David versus Goliath, right? Is the amateur gonna take the pro? They're gonna negotiate a handicap that the amateur gets because it's inevitable. The amateur has less experience. Yeah. Maybe his equipment isn't as good, but it's interesting. It'll be interesting to tell that story where the, the pro and the amateur have to negotiate some form of a, uh, a track lead, right? A disadvantage to the, to the pro so that maybe yeah. What did you What did you do at the, at the very beginning? Okay, what was the first? What was your first step? You said I have this idea. Yeah. Did you write it out, or did yeah. you just say, yeah. "Let no. me call my friend"? And that's a great question. Yeah. So I wrote it out. You I sat oh, down. Did. Over, yeah. Over the course of several weeks, I started with a blank piece, of eleven by seventeen. I always use eleven by seventeen paper. It's larger. And I just, I brainstorm. You just brainstorm the concept. And through the course of about a year's time of pitching the concept, the racing concept, the, the show concept to other successful producers, like uh, retired producers and the racers themselves. So it iterates, it, 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 it comes down to a point where, okay, now we can shoot it. We have something, let's go to the track. And I, I, I loved this part, Carrie. I had about 70 people in Grand Bend, Ontario. After the concept was finalized, we went out, I hired 12 cameras. I hired the racers. We got the production crew to run the, the racing operations. And we did one day shooting of the pilot and it was successful and it was amazing. And it all came from about a year or two before that where you drafted out, you just, uh, it's a thought experiment. You, you play through it, right? Did you have a budget for this, Jerry? Was this your, your money? My money. You got to invest. Now, you got to invest. Now, I had friends. Sorry, I had friends, Carrie. I had friends that loved the concept and were willing to put in some cash. So I got some family and friends to invest as well. Okay. Was there a certain budget, certain amount of money you said I have to get before I can shoot? Or did you say, this, this is enough. This is all I need. Now, I looked, I saw one of them, one of them you had 75 people yeah. involved in this, in this show yeah. that, that, that you were creating. Yeah. So... Yeah, you know, it seems like 
if if I said, uh, oh, I have this idea and so forth, and a couple of people said, okay, I'll put in a couple of hundred, I'll put in a hundred, but did it have to be thousands? It was thousands. Now, it, it, trust me though, I did it on the pinch. Uh, I got a lot of volunteers. The racing community loved the idea. And if I could say one thing, um, I, as a person, cannot BS anybody. In business, your name is mud. If you lie, if you're insincere, non-authentic, and if you make a promise and don't keep it, you're done. Yeah. And I have a ton of respect for these people that have helped me and they continue to help me. And I couldn't have done it uh, when I shot the first pilot. I couldn't have done without done it without a lot of volunteers and just asking for breaks from the track owner. And he was a, a wonderful person, too. So you got to invest some money. Right? OK, you what's the difference between a side hustle project and a hobby? What's the ah. difference? That's a great question. Oh, man. I think a hobby, because motorcycles have been a hobby of mine. How did it turn into this side hustle? It turns into a side hustle when you want to step up the game a bit, when you want to go a little bit larger, right? Right. The, when you want to uh, make the payout a little bit more, you got to risk a little bit more. Um, I'm not risk adverse. Like I, I kind of like challenges for, and I'm a risky guy, right? I mean, I like motorcycles, but I don't race. Not that much risk. I don't like pain. You don't <laughs> like pain. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking too much of falling, so I better not race. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, so to answer your question, I, I, I think um, you, you, you have to invest a little bit. Um, th there comes a point where you, you got to say that, well, that I can't do it for that much. It's beyond my means. But you're, you have to look for a return in your investment. And if, I, if it's just my labor and not cash going in, well, that's just my passion. And I can still do that for, you know, in, until you run into a wall where someone says that's a horrible idea. It cannot work. And these are the reasons why. I look at those reasons. If I can't jump those hurdles, that's when I fold the cards. If it, uh, years ago, Carrie, this is important. Years ago, editing software, you needed an edit suite that was worth at least $100,000, right? You know that. So true. So today, Final Cut Pro is $400. Yeah. And that's, uh, they filmed several, Jurassic Park, I think, a major portion of that movie was done on Final Cut Pro 10 or whatever. Uh, yes. And uh, an iMac computer. Why you, I, I, did so, I did so much research on you because I thought <laughs> uh, what you do and who you are and what you do is so interesting. So, and, I, and I wondered to myself, this man built a editing studio, uh, Jerry, you can get people to edit your, 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 your work. You can, yeah, you can pay them to edit. And, and I will. Really, what, and it takes so long for me. It takes so long yeah. to edit. Why, why did you? Okay, so great question again, Carrie, you're awesome. <laughs> so um, the cost would, um, uh, would make the, the project in, uh, unattainable. I had to learn how to do it to bring the cost down. Okay. Literally, that's the bottom line. Okay. And I knew I had this odd confidence. I knew I could I could learn how to edit well enough. And uh, if you haven't seen the the final 24 minute, it's not bad. I've been told by pros that it's a great job. And uh, I have started. You always, have you always had a pretty good eye for? Design, I think, yeah, I think I do, but I listen to the pros. I always bring it to someone who knows more than I do, and I listen to them, and I I, I get their their pointers on you know how to edit in little little things like when you when you're cutting an edit from one person's eyeballs and you go to another scene. If there's another person in that scene, you try to land the eyeballs roughly on the same part of the viewing screen. Just little little things like that, you know. Can, can a person learn this on social media, like through YouTube or something and, and yes. learn? 
Yes. What you were going through. I mean, you yeah. had you, you had people that you could talk with. Yeah. That you're, you're very fortunate that you had people former who were in the television and business prior that you yeah. could talk with. That's you're very fortunate to have that. Yes. Yeah. I, I sought. I, I sought. I looked for those, those people. I saw. I was after them. Um, but when it comes to the technical aspect of using the software, YouTube University, thumbs up to that. It, it works fantastic. It really does. There's all kinds of classes online that you could quickly just, you know, how do I do this? And yes. as you're editing, in minutes, you've solved the problem. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I was just, I was just amazed of the story of you and gathering these 75 people and shooting this all day with cameras and so forth. And I'm saying, you had to get the camera people and you had to get this. It was a bit to organize. Um, one question, <laughs> you're, you're, you gather people around you that you respect and admire, like Tim O'Brien, who's yeah. a producer, and Hugh Wilson, yeah, uh, and host. Uh, your one of your hosts is is Lindsay Thompson. He's incredible. Does the tech work? Where did you find these individuals? How did you come in contact with these? Okay, uh, Tim O'Brien. I actually put an ad out for some help, and he, ah. he responded to it. Then Hugh Wilson, a friend of mine, introduced me to him. He's actually. Uh, an ex-producer, operations uh, and productions guy for, uh, there's a, a certain channel here. It's uh, the, the, the shopping network. Oh. Yeah, so he was part of that. So he understood all that stuff. How and do you, pit, how did you pitch? How did you pitch this idea I went, to them? I, I went and I met with them and I, I essentially delivered the idea to them. If I had video, I would show video. And I sat and had coffee with them all individually one-on-one -on -one. Why? Why? and always my whole thing is about connecting to other people why did these professionals yep. give you just because you emailed them saying i would like to get together with this idea why do you think they they said okay i first off i offered to buy them either lunch or coffee <laughs> Right. If I know I'm going to win something from them, I, I want to get them at least lunch. Right? <laughs> and uh, then when I get the opportunity, like I was saying before, I present me who I am, as sincere as an authentic as I am. I, I tell them the story. It's it's no BS. This is what it is. And uh, your help is required. Mm. You uh, on a personal note. Uh, you went to uh, Mount Clare University in Mount Clare, New Jersey? No, 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 no. No? No. Where'd you go to school? Uh, Ryerson Polytechnical Institute, which is downtown Toronto. Oh, in Toronto? Yes. Oh, okay. So, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in, you're, you know, you're in Toronto now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What what personal connections do we need to make things happen in the producing field? What type of, you touched on it, but what type of connections do and skills in connecting do you have? You feel people say, okay, I'll have lunch with you. What, you know, what, what I, skills do you have in which to attract these professionals? Um, to, well, to, they have, or, or, they, yeah, go ahead. No, they, they eventually learn my skill sets. I, I don't really tell them this is what I've done because I know I'm, I'm, I'm asking you which skills you think you have to be oh, able to oh, connect okay. with these professionals. Okay. Yeah, so before meeting these people, yeah. I, uh, I didn't have these videos to show them that I can, I can edit and I produce this stuff, right? So 
I tell them what I believe I can do, and I, they they get this energy from me. I guess this this sense of passion and who doesn't like talking to a guy with energy? I don't know. I like it. <laughs> you got this crazy energy as well. And that's that's one of the the skills I always put down for people in my community or when I'm coaching an individual. I talk about their energy. Believe yeah. in yourself. It, that's what it comes from. You can believe, but then just, you know, be your energy is so low, you're not connecting. Right, right, doesn't, right. It doesn't connect when you, when your energy is, is so yeah. low. You, yeah, you, you've got to have that energy for, for people to feed off, for sure. Yeah. When I was doing research, that's what I noticed about you. Your okay. love and energy and passion, but that energy to be able to talk about what you do and 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 how much you love it and so i said oh yeah i i i, I want to talk with this i want to talk with this man awesome this, this show yeah uh it's not about you know racing motorcycles but it's a it's a different than what we've seen before why did you set the racing field the, the way that you did okay this racing idea the way that you did right uh okay so uh i'm gonna do some reverse engineering for you i i wanted to be able to capture not only the event i wanted to capture what the riders were about i want to capture that on video i want to capture it with high quality visuals cinema cinema cinematography that is is like close to number one, right? So I, I got a lot of ideas from certain people on how to manage angles and so on. But in a normal racing environment, you can't do that. Directors do not have that kind of control. So in order to capture that good story, uh, not only the beautiful, the, the art and science of the motorcycles themselves and how the people are, the, the story, in order to capture the story, you needed to create your own event. I needed to create my own event. And if you create the event, nothing goes live, racing live, until the director says go. That's, that's the luxury that the producers, the executive producers, the directors, the camera people, GoPro guys, the drone guys, when, when they're all ready, that's when the racing starts. And in normal racing, uh, in, in regional racing, national racing, you don't have that. It's it's only about racing. It's not about capturing the stories. So, the wingnut idea, the crazy idea, to cap to be able to control that storytelling, is create your own event. Make it a shorter track so cameras can get to where they need to be quicker. Make the the lap the races themselves shorter. So there's only racing for three and a half minutes, not for 25. So there's time to, to, to race more. There's actually more racing. And the focus of the racing is on two individuals. So it's head-to-head -head racing. It's like drag racing, but you got corners. So the audience and spectators only watch two guys in the last three laps of a race, because they only race three laps. So does that? Does and that you had, you had to put all this together. Yeah. Gee whiz, you had to develop a racing style. Yeah. To be able to shoot your. Yeah. I asked the riders if it was possible. Show. Yeah, I had to ask the riders first. They actually designed it. I'm just the facilitator, right? I'm the dealer, the guy who gets her done. <laughs> the executive producer, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they've all accepted it. We ran it uh, two times and they both loved, they, both times uh, they liked it. So is this idea of connecting um, to the individual racer and telling yeah. Telling their story. That's what it's all that, about. Because that, that connects me. I find out who they are, what they want, how they're living, so forth and so on. Yes. I get emotionally connected with them. And yes. then I can cheer on. That's because right. I know them. 
I remember I, I was, when I was doing research about you, you said, I need to do more of that. Yes. Find the story. Yes. And the, the story in both of them, and then tell the story and then show the. Yes. The focus. So, so I am connected. It was, yeah. I think that was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> because so many times I've seen races, car races or motorcycle races, and I'm not emotionally connected. Yeah. With, uh, with the driver or say, oh, I can cheer someone on. Right. And say, come on, you can do it. Come on, come on. Yeah. Yes. So you, I, I, I saw something where you, you said, I need to do more of that. And I was yes. going, this is brilliant in making a show about this. You gotta, you gotta tell stories of, of the people involved. Agreed, 100%. And the pilot that I shot, I did a great job. It was an excellent production. I captured the event and I barely captured the storytelling. The next show, the next event is gonna be all about storytelling. And we've got a plan to how to capture that really, really well. And I, I was talking to you earlier about some of the references, some of the uh, references currently that you can go online and, and, and see, right? Uh, that, that tell a really good story. They have certain techniques that really let people tell their, tell their story. I can't wait to run the next event. It's, uh, we're hoping to shoot in September again, eh, Kerry? Okay, in September? Yep. And then uh, we'll be able to see it yeah, the following months. Uh, the following months after September, I'll be doing uh, editing. And uh, depending on how we distribute it, uh, you'll certainly see teasers on YouTube and whatnot. But uh, we're, this is a major step after producing and shooting it. Uh, the distribution. There's lots of avenues for distribution. Yeah, lots of them. Where, where are you hoping to distribute? I don't even know if I want to, I don't even want to mention any names. It might even uh, jinx me, right? But, but okay, but you'll, you'll let your community know oh, yeah. through, through social media. You let us yeah. know through social media where we can go to, yeah. to, to see Motorcycle Wars. 100%. You can follow along on the website we're going to be producing as as uh, little snippets of production get get produced. Oh, okay. Uh, through the web and the website. People informed. As I start to edit through the months of September and November, October, December, I'll, you'll see snippets for sure. And uh, by that time, we should know who's going dist to be distributing it. Okay. Right? And the you, once, are, you once yeah. said uh, that uh, you operate on feel, not thought. Oh, what, what did you mean by that? Uh, I, I, I guess that that goes down to um, what, what's in you. Like, you, there's a passion. I don't know how to describe. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. But um, when you've got a gut feeling for something, um, you, you just, you envision it so well. You have a gut feeling. You're passionate about it. You can talk to it. Uh, you got to be able to describe what, what it is that that you're doing you got to be able to put the vision in someone else it just uh i don't know um, it just keeps you going and you and you be, you call yourself a workaholic are yeah. you a workaholic uh, do you do you still do your nine to so-called nine to five job yes you I do, do. Oh yeah, I do nine to five. And Jerry, 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 then where do you find the time? I have so many clients, so many people in my community say, where do you find the time? So executive producer of yeah. Motorcycle Wars, where do you find the time? I, I need about six hours maximum, six and a half hours sleep, right? And then uh, I'm, I'm just efficient. I, I, I use a... 11 by 17 piece of paper and I jot down all the ideas that I need to do for that day and I prioritize them and I, I kill it. Hey, I got to rest. Every day you do that? I um, always... Every week I do that. Every week. And each and every day I do it. So do I. 
Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. I, think, and, I, I think it's and, called time bombs. Write it on. You know, just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I, I do. Write, I write it out and I put it in my pocket. And then yeah. I, 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 I'm able to pull out different ideas and just write them. Because if yeah. I don't, you know, the, the universe, I'll just use it, go right over. Yeah. I can't remember what I thought a few minutes ago. So you do the same. I do the same thing. Yeah. So, some people call that time boxing. You, you find the, uh, the appropriate um, prioritization of these tasks that you know you have to do, right? You got to know what you're, what you're doing. Right. Yeah. If you're if you if you grown up with the hobby and you evolve with an idea, it you need to know what you have to do. That's one thing that's really important. I don't know why, but if you set up a goal, I think I could figure out all the items that need to be done to accomplish that goal. You, you need to be able to do that. If you want to start a business uh, for selling T-shirts or printing T-shirts, well, you must know all the equipment that you need all the contacts that you'll likely need so you just write down your stuff and so writing it down for you or putting it in your phone now when i put my stuff in my phone i forget about it i'll lose it so i mean this was years ago phone and i and i realized i, I look maybe a couple months later and it would be the idea would be gone yeah so, you don't use a phone, you use... I do, I, I do, yeah. You know what I do? What? I have wireless printer connected to my phone. So I'll jot my notes down and send it right to the printer and I'll, that will never happen to me where, where I forget my ideas. Even, even, even when you're away, even when you're not at home? I'll send an email to myself if I'm, if I'm away. And, an email. and then you have all these emails yeah, all the information that you printed out and then boom. Right, because you're right. I will not go back to a note, even if I wrote it this morning, it'll be a lost idea. Yeah. The phone's got just too, too much stuff in it. <laughs> right? <laughs> but that's that, but so that little device of of printing it out and having it on in paper, and yep. then you can look at the ideas and so forth. And so on. I got a stack of papers. Yeah. Now you have so many people working on your projects uh, at different times yeah. and so many, they have ideas and so many, you're always, I, I assume you're always gathering ideas from others yeah. in, in, in the field or in, yeah. body, in camera work or yes. so forth and so on. I, mean, I have my videographer, a lot of times traveling with me if I go different places. Yeah. And uh, often they know a lot more than I do, their skills. Right. I let, if the guy is really good and we communicate really well, I'm working with a fellow by the name of Anish. He lives in Vancouver now, but he helped me shoot in Grand Bend a few years back. I gave him a call the other week and I said, hey, Anish, we're going to be firing this event back up. I need your help again. Uh, this is the uh, this is how it's evolved so far. So I gave him the rundown of how we're going to produce it technically. And he goes, okay. Um, he uh, he understands, and now he's gonna he's gonna do his magic. Right. Uh, this is where you got to start letting go of certain ways of doing things wow. and and work with people who know their stuff. As long as you're connected, and you can you know have at least a few chats about what what I'm envisioning. And then he says, okay, I, I see your vision, uh, but let's keep that, but modify just a bit to make this happen better. You got to, you got to let go a lot. So, so you like that camaraderie with uh, very, uh, of, of people that you respect who are professionals and what they do. Yes. You like that. Uh, I love it. I love it. I feed off it. Do we, do we need that in our, in our side hustles? Do we need that uh, camaraderie, do that connection? You, you, yes, 100%. 100%. You, you, can't, you, you can't do it alone. Can a hockey team, I like hockey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're in Ontario. Of course you like hockey. Oh, of course. Yeah, come on now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so can a, 
can a hockey team get the win if they're not playing their roles really well and communicating in their roles? No, they can't get the win. Um, who, who, who's the niche? Um, who is your niche? Who is uh, Motorcycle Wars for? What's the niche? Oh, you mentioned niche. I mean, okay, all that, that's great. Done about you and finding out. Yeah, you mentioned that a number of times. The niche. yeah, yeah. So great question. So um, when I met Emily and her partner Matthew, uh, that's one of the questions that we needed to iron out. Who is the audience for this television show? Goes without saying, two percent of the audience will absolutely, absolutely be the motorcycle enthusiast. Anyone who races will want to watch the show just out of general interest for sure, right? Uh, actually out of more than just general interest. They just love motorcycles so much, they'll watch, any, they'll watch anything, even if it's bad. <laughs> but um, you got the general uh, population of motorcycle people that will certainly watch it. But there's an, a large portion that we need to capture in order to make this show profitable right, and want the big boys to want to air it. So how do we capture that? And Matthew and Emily were addressing this issue and it was up to me to kind of say, okay, well, uh, and they of course drew it out of me. Um, it's about storytelling. If you tell the story really well, it doesn't matter if they make knives, if they do ink, if they do motorcycle racing or what, right? A good story is an awesome story. When you go in and interview these racers, yeah, what what kind of stories are you looking for? Now I know one of your favorite uh, shows out there, <laughs> yeah, which you know, in doing my research about you, yeah, I went to this show. What's the show called? Uh, Soft White Underbelly by Mark Leta. I went there and I was spellbound. I said, well, I've never heard this show. And I went there and stayed there. <laughs> and I was a fan and I'm going, this is so cool. What kind of, because they tell stories about themselves. Yeah. What, when you interview them, what questions are you asking to get the story of who they are? Is it their passion? Uh, I love I love racing, and that this is the reason why. Or <laughs> my wife and I divorced, and da da da. What 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 kind of stories do you think connect to your audience? Well, uh, anyone with passion, and if you go to any, I've met I've met all kinds of racers. Uh, and all of them have one common idea. They're very passionate about what they do. They have to be passionate. Uh, passion brings knowledge to you. Of course, when you want to do something really well, you learn, learn, and learn until, you know, as good as you can be at wh whatever it is that you're doing. So everybody racing motorcycles is passionate. You get a passionate person talking in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. You just ask them, tell me about yourself. And it's likely they'll just keep going, right? Oh, okay. Whether it's, okay. That, it's that simple. I have a series of standard <laughs> yeah. questions, but what you're really hoping for, you get an articulate person that's really passionate about something, you're going to get a fantastic storytelling yes. session. Yes, yes. Well, that's all. No, thank you for answering that <laughs> so well, so clearly. Wow, okay. What is, you talk about a gearhead. Well, no, let me, and before we even go to the gearhead, what it is, my yeah. gearhead? Yeah. What kind of motorcycle do you like to see on the, on the road, regular, just the road these days? I, 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 I saw two, three, well, here in New York City. Yeah. Uh, there, there were some motorcycles of about 10. And I said, I wonder what Jerry would say yeah. is the, the ideal motorcycle for the average person. Oh, wow. The ideal for the average person. The average person. Okay. So the average person, that's important. Um, 
So you, you, you want to go with something that has low maintenance. You want to start it, change the oil, put gas in it, and not worry about too much, right? So all the Japanese manufacturers, they make wonderful, reliable, low cost, low maintenance motorcycles. Um, I could name cow, any Kawasaki, anything that's under 500 cc is a great introduction to motorcycling. Um, they all, all the brands, they, they, they make them, right? From Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki. Uh, there's nothing I would lean to towards uh, 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 any brand in particular, but right. You yeah. just, well, you just mentioned one right there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but they're they're all they're all good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And when, when it, sorry, when, when it comes to my to my personal thing right now as a an older fella, <laughs> um, I love racing motorcycles. Anything that looks like it's been on the racetrack three hours ago. And you put it on the road if it looks like a race bike i know it's not very the racers would not think this was cool but i love seeing race bikes on a street <laughs> maybe not with numbers but a race bike is so colorful they sound so sweet whether it's a v4 an inline four or a v twin they all have unique sounds they're often loud right i like them loud <laughs> and the, sometimes they're referred to as crotch rockets, uh, but uh, they're, they're, they're cafe style. Cafe style. Yeah. The original cafe. Do you know what a cafe racer is? No. Oh, wow. Okay. So cafe racers way back in the day after the war, all the boys came home uh, with, their, uh, with their motorcycles, usually Harley Davidson's back then. And they would race from cafe to cafe. In order to do that race as quickly as possible, they, they, they used to call it doing the ton. The ton is doing 100 miles per hour. So they would race from cafe to cafe. And in order to do that, they'd have to chop up this motorcycle, turn it into something that they could uh, have less wind resistance. So you, you lower the handlebars um, and uh, you do little things to the motor and you, you race from cafe to cafe. That's a cafe racer. And Very that's nice. where most of today's motorcycle racing, the, the, the original shape of the motorcycle came from the original uh, cafe. As a matter of fact, Carrie, wow. uh, Motorcycle Wars was originally called Ultimate Cafe Rider. In the, 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 the you, first, changed, you, you changed it because? Motorcycle Wars is more commercially acceptable. <laughs> And I was okay with it. I was okay with it because this is about trying to make some money. Yeah. And, uh, and, and also the, the reason why, the reason why um, people will be like myself, will gravitate towards this show yeah. is because of the passion these racers have about what they do. Yes, which I'm passionate about, you know, I'm a connection strategist and I'm passionate about how people connect to each other faster. Uh, what makes people connect to each other faster? That's and, interesting. Um, the art of that. So people like myself will watch your show because of that, that feeling of passion and want to know and want to hear these riders and people around them, how they, how passionate they are, how much they believe in what they do and how much fun they're having uh, yeah. and fulfillment. Is that correct? 100%. Yeah. If you hear, if you ever get the opportunity, and I'm, I'm hoping to capture this, I've, I've sat down with a few older guys that you, would talk about what the last lap is like for them mentally. They've been riding for about, they've been racing for about 15, maybe 20 minutes and they're in the lead or maybe just about to capture the lead. So what goes through their mind and what's happening about risk? And, oh. and oh. right at, at that point, and I know guys who have crashed out in that last half lap, or the last lap trying to capture that lead or um, 
or whatever position that they're trying to capture. It, it's a something something that goes beyond what I studied. It's something that happens mentally to these guys when they're in that state of mind, when they're not on the motorcycle anymore. They're they're truly operating on, uh, I guess, feel or intuition or I'm not sure exactly what it is, right? But they have this sense on the throttle and their sense on the this 300 pound machine that's doing 200 and whatever miles an hour. And uh, they're risking everything. They're not even... It's not even a risk to them. Do they, do they, do they think of, about that they could get hurt anywhere? Yeah, look at you shaking your head. No. They don't think about that. Is that what you asked them, sorry? Yeah, kind yeah. of. I mean, it's like, if you want this feeling of fulfillment, of this feeling of this is the greatest moment to be on this motorcycle, feel this vibration, feel the, the wind moving fast. Sliding. What was that? The bike is sliding like this on the asphalt. The rubber in the asphalt, they're, they're, they have such a, a management of what the rubber meets, meeting the road is feeling like. They're drifting, it's floating. It's bizarre. And what, see, now you're giving me goosebumps here. <laughs> and people who, it, with their passion, whatever they do, yeah. to get that, that connection to that emotion, that fulfillment of living life totally, fully at yeah. this moment. Yeah. They, that, is that what you're looking for? Is that what you wanted? Their stories? Is it's that what, yeah. how you want to connect to us uh, who are not motorcycle enthusiast is that what you saying yes let me get their stories so you can connect and feel your own fulfillment your own joy is that what is that i think, you're, I think you're right is that what you're looking is that what you're looking for? i, I that's what, yeah, I have to say yes to that because that's why it's so important for me to tell a good story. I mean, what is a good story? Some, someone who's describing their vision, their idea so well and clearly, uh, and often with someone who's got passion, they've rehearsed that storytelling ability uh, often enough that they've, they've honed in that skill of being able to, to talk to it. And, and there are a lot of people that, that can do this. Um, so you'll often get riders that are very quiet, but if you, oh yeah, most riders are very quiet and they're in their own zone. But if you get an opportunity to talk to them, and I have, they, they come out, they, they come out of their shell and they, they tell their story. It's just, it's not even a story. It's just, is, it, is it, is it, a, is, is it Jerry, a, 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 a feeling of, living totally in that moment and of joy and yes. of fulfillment. Yeah. I, I saw a That's movie, an old movie with Kurt Russell in it called yeah. The Dreamers. Hmm. And, and it was about his, Kurt Russell's little, little girl and riding a horse. And they were, the family was down and out. And it was about this little girl's uh, feeling of getting this, this feel of excitement and fulfillment and living her life to the fullest when her horse, her horse was running. And I said, wow, this, this is great. And then <laughs> that point, but also Kurt Russell, uh, his father, Kurt Russell, the actor, yeah. his father, Bing Russell, was an actor. And then he bought a baseball team, uh, a mi very minor, minor league baseball team. Yeah. And Kurt Russell, when he was a kid, said to one of these baseball players who came down from the major leagues and played on 
his father's baseball uh, uh, team. Yeah. And Kurt Russell went to him and said, that drop from professional to the minor leagues, doesn't that hurt you? Doesn't that make you feel like less valued? And he said, which okay. I, I wrote down and I'm asking you, and he said, when you connect with baseball, the true game of baseball, he said, there's no other feeling like it. Would you, when you get there, when you get that feeling of fulfillment from what you're doing, there's no other place on earth that you would rather be. Right. So, and, and I went, wow. When you can get, do something, there's no so, other place that you- Was, was that in the movie? On life, in life. Pardon? Was that in the movie that he said that? Or no, that no, that, that was- uh, In an uh, interview. That was um, on a, uh, on a platform, YouTube, was it YouTube? And okay. it was it was under Kurt Russell telling a story That's about his ah. father. It was a documentary. Ah, okay, okay, I'm with you now. And okay, so I, he was talking about his father, who was an actor, and the side hustle that his father had done, and no nobody believed in it, and so forth and so on. Ah. And Kurt Russell was talking about this side hustle that his father was an actor, but here's a side hustle. And this professional who, the professional wasn't sad and feeling bad that uh, he was no longer playing in the big leagues, the national, you know, the, the major leagues. Yeah. He says, just as long as I was playing this game called baseball, Wow, Isn't that's that, powerful. He said, where, where on earth, earth would you want to be? So that's reminding me of motorcycle wars, you know, that you're doing. I mean, yeah. Where, what else would you want to do in your life right now that gives you as much satisfaction than you being executive producer of this show that you created and where else would you, what else would you want to do? What? To get this fulfillment, to get this, this is why I'm here type of feeling. Yeah, man. Oh, wow. That's wonderful, Kerry. That's really, really good. You know, I'm, I'm looking at a poster that I've got. It's one of the promotional things and it says, well, it's a pitch to broadcasters and, and brand, spot, uh, brand partners. It's, it's me allowing them to enter into the, their theater. So I have this line that says, welcome to their world. So I'm introducing these people. I'm trying to get people to watch this. I want you to see how these guys, these women and these men live their lives like this. Welcome to their world. Enjoy it because they're going to tell you a really cool story. And being there is so fulfilling and hopefully more people will want to come and visit the track. And, I love being at the track. Being at the what? At the track? At the racetrack. At a racetrack. Um, I had a, a fella who's working with us. His name's Ken. Uh, one of the things that he says in one of our interviews, he says he's never brought anyone to a racetrack and they, them not liking it. Right. So even if you're not racing, if you're at a track, my wife said it. My wife, she's a big help in, in everything that I'm doing. When I, she doesn't quite understand it, but she figured it out once she got to the track. When yeah. I got her to the track, Carrie, she goes, wow, this is really sexy. That was the first thing that came out of her, right? So, yeah. so it, it is that's, it, that's, what you said. That's because we, as, as humans, all of us, when she said that, that's because she's connected to that energy of how it makes 
a person feel when you're when they're doing something that they enjoy doing something that makes them feel fulfilled a purpose and your wife is connected to that i'm connected to that because that's why i wanted to talk with you fulfillment uh, yeah. fulfillment that's it of this my my passion and and what makes me feel really good and it i see it there in motorcycle wars and hear the stories of other people yeah. fulfilled with their passion, as you said earlier, yeah. their passion and fulfillment. Uh, where else on the planet would you want to be yeah. than around people at the, at, at, yeah. you know, there with, with those, yeah. those passionate people? And you, you know, uh, where else that's why this was so much fun for me to talk with you i love talking about it a, a, a person who has been around motorcycles ever since you were nine years old yep. and developed into now it's developed into a side hustle a, a business yep. and you're still you're, you're going to continue that I also, because I'm going to let you go, because I am respectful of your time, Jerry. Thank you. Uh, but I, <laughs> I, I either read or saw it in my research of you. You have other projects going. <laughs> are 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 they as intriguing, unique, different, and connected to that passion that you have? Um, or are they an entire different field? No, no. Uh, I have only one other project that's not necessarily related to this. Uh, currently, I've got three motorcycles that I'm building, and I, I still love them. Um, actually, one of them is for a friend of mine. He's going to be, uh, uh, his son wanted to throw this little motorcycle away. And my friend said, hey, you know what? Yeah, it's better in the garbage. But he gave it to me to re restore it. And next Christmas, he's, he's going to freak his son out by presenting this old motorcycle to him. Ah. That, that's close to my heart. That's, that's a really cool one. I, I'm looking forward to It's about 20 feet to the left of me right now. I'm looking forward to actually working on it today. Oh, that's, um, that's fabulous. It, and, yeah. Well, once again, it's, and it's about your passion. It's about yeah. what, what, what makes you feel good and yeah. helps you to grow and, and live your life to the fullest. Yes. Yeah. It's in the same, it's, it's yeah. the same field. So yeah. uh, Jerry, thank you so very, very much. Um, it, it was such a, a pleasure. I'm, I'm glad we, uh, uh, you gave me an opportunity to, to talk with you. Pleasure's all mine, Kerry, and I hope we talk again. I'm, I'm let you, I'll let you know how things are going. Yeah, and, and you, how can we keep in touch with you? Uh, you could easily uh, go to the website if you wish. Uh, my phone number, my personal cell number is on the website. Oh, oh okay, yeah, don't give us that, don't give us that. But um, in the website is, uh, is it motorcycle? MotorcycleWars.tv. MotorcycleWars.tv. Yes. That, that's very easy. <laughs> Thank you. That's very easy. Good. Actually, the, the brand, one of the first things that I had to make sure, and this is the administrative side of things, I had to make sure that that name was protected in North America. And I got that done. That was a little bit of an investment. Um, I had a, an, an American lawyer and a Canadian lawyer do the work and they uh, it took two years to do it and maybe a couple thousand dollars but it's it's now branded in the states and we plan we're planning to uh to to visit uh, the states and all the various tracks that we can do this at I've already I actually got a connection already in Pensacola Florida so when are you coming to New York 
I love New York. My wife wants to know where are you in Manhattan by any chance? Yes. Yeah. No, you're not. Yes. Oh, we love it. I've been so many times. Uh, what? Yeah. I well, I've been five times in the last eight, nine years. Oh, I love New York. Area to New York. Well, we've got all all the information and, and our numbers and everything. So <laughs> Yeah, so you will, and I'll let you know and so forth uh, uh, about this podcast and so forth. Sure. It's up, but, uh, uh, but Gary, thank you so very, very much. Continued success. Thank you, Carrie. It was fantastic. Okay. See ya. See ya.